Hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing alright. If you're not a Chelsea supporter, you're coming in and you're just, you know, it's just it's Tuesday for you and you're just looking up some news. Uh, if you're a Chelsea supporter, this is how we live life, isn't it? It's always on the edge. As I told you guys, there's never a calm day at this football club. There isn't, it doesn't exist and um, you have to be in a very good condition to be a supporter of this club because if you're not, oh boy, you might not make it. You know, I told you prior to the Everton game, this club is a, is, is a soap opera on steroids. We are EastEnders and um, it's gone bonkers on the pitch and off the pitch. It's insane. And now today, today is serious. I, I want to say it's serious. I, I don't want to come on here and make it look like, oh my God, the world's ending. This is chaos. Ah, and then just start going off on one. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and come with a level head on this. But I have to stress, this is serious. This is serious now. This is no fun and games. We're not just, uh, you know, analysing a light-hearted story or, oh, uh, a player is linked or a player might go or, you know, oh, even the sell. Oh, Chelsea's going to be sold. Great. Okay, we got a bidder chosen. Great. Like, no. Now it gets serious. Now we're talking... We're talking folding. We're talking Chelsea getting kicked out of the Premier League. We're talking... We're talking talking now, yeah? This is big. So... We're going to get into the details and I'm going to try and give you my analysis on it and what I think based on my opinion only. I'm not looking to, to, to get any uh, liability done on me or something. I'm stressing everything I'm about to say from the examples that I present on my opinion only and we'll see where it goes. I'll give you that after I present this. Now, this story has come from Matt Lawton at The Times and it's now been presented by multiple media outlets. Sky Sports News have spent about 10 minutes talking about this story and giving an, an, an in-depth explanation. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. What has happened today? This is pretty big. Matt Lawton, take it away. Chelsea sell hit snag over fears. Roman Abramovich wants £1.6 billion loan repaid. Uh, Martin Ziegler at the Times as well goes on to say Chelsea sell hits major obstacle after government told Abramovich wants to restructure the deal so the, lean, the loan can be repaid. Ministers would balk at that. This is uh, deep now. This is deep. Um, so now we're hearing after what we heard initially at the very beginning of this, if you guys remember when Chelsea were put up for sale, Roman Abramovich, even in a statement, told that the world, the loan, don't worry about it. It's fine. Forget it. It's like it didn't exist. And I remember at the time, I did tell you guys, when we started to look at this situation and Roman's having to sell... He doesn't actually have to sell if he doesn't want to. And I told you that when this whole Russia-Ukraine thing started. If you're going to be playing political games, Roman Abramovich could be well within his right after being told that he has to sell Chelsea. And if he does sell Chelsea, all the money won't go to him. Not even a penny will go to him. Basically, he's in a lose-lose situation. When you put someone in a lose-lose situation, guess what? They ain't got anything to lose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he could well within his rights just go, I'm not selling. There we go, because the UK government were going to get this money or it was going to go via a charitable foundation that the UK government has control of so they can monitor and see exactly where it's going, which basically means it's going to the government. Roman could just be like, <laughs> you're not letting me have it. I'm not letting you have it. There we are. We're all losers. He could. I told you that at the very beginning. And then Roman put out the statement saying that, OK, he's going to let the sale happen and he's he's wiped off the loan. And, and then I went, oh, OK, cool. Um, if Roman's going to do that, fair enough. But the sale's not done yet. And that point from back then still applies. Roman right now could still go, you know what, that whole process that we just went through to pick a bidder, screw it. I ain't sell it. We'll go, the club will go into administration. Tough. He could do that if he wanted to. We would like to think he wouldn't. Now, for more detail, let's go into what Rob, Rob Draper has said uh, because he's managed to put a bit of detail onto this. So check this out. If Roman Abramovich now wants his £1.6 billion loan paid back as Time Sport is reporting, then Chelsea have a huge existential problem. UK government have always insist insisted this can't or won't happen. The clock is ticking on May the 31st deadline, but it's more serious than a complex delay. 
The Premier League meet on June 8th to constitute the new league for 22-23. If Chelsea aren't licensed to operate by then, and they are only licensed now on UK government sufferance, then they can't be part of the Premier League. Simple. Where would that leave Chelsea is a moo point. All along there has been this nagging doubt. If Abramovich does Putin's bidding, then is Putin about to allow £2.5 billion worth of Russian assets to go to the UK government and end up in the hands of US private equity? If Abramovich thinks the UK government will blink because they don't want to see Chelsea fold or go into administration, then he's gambling hugely on the government's uh, liability. A good bet, you might say. But be in no doubt, if he wants debts repaid, Chelsea's future is at stake with the clock ticking. And then this goes on to explain the Ratcliffe involvement. And this is where I want to add some focus. Um, you can, I'll, I'll keep reading this actually, but I want to stress this point. This situation that we're hearing of today was made clear to the bidders and the UK government last week. So everything we're hearing now, Roman apparently wants his loan repaid. He's not wiping it off like we all thought. He wants it repaid. Chelsea apparently told the government and told the bidders last week of this that we're only hearing about now. Ratcliffe came in with a bid a few days ago. Without even consulting the rain group, he came straight to Chelsea. We're going to come back to that very, very shortly. Let's keep reading because this gets interesting. Intriguing how a last minute Radcliffe bid mimicked Abramovich's language. Radcliffe wants proceeds to go to charitable trust to support victims of the war. Abramovich initially wanted to set up a foundation for the benefit of all victims of the war in Ukraine. Almost as though the bid was tailor made to be what Abramovich wanted. And yet all along it's been clear neither Roman nor Radcliffe get to decide where that money goes. It's for the UK government to decide. If Roman agrees to sell right now, that's a sizable if... Imagine if it came down to May 30th and there was genuine chance Chelsea could fold, but somehow Ratcliffe bid could save the day. Only the UK government agreed to elect the proceeds to an independent charitable foundation. Well, that would be better than letting Chelsea fold. And who could object? If this war comes to a close, um, if, uh, to a close and politics change, to Roman Abramovich being trustee of that foundation. That way we could see Roman as the true humanitarian he is, rather than the sanctioned Putin crony who gained his wealth easy to rig auction. It's a very interesting point. And before I read this, I had it in my mind. I, I got in touch with, uh, with Goonie, Man Knows Football, subscribed to him. Because we, we saw this happen and I went, Ratcliffe's coming at the last minute here. If you think about this situation now, if he wants to be paid, if Roman wants his loan repaid, and you're looking at Roman, Chelsea, The Time, and Ratcliffe coming in, with a late bid. Who is Ratcliffe? Ratcliffe, who's tried to buy Chelsea in the past. Ratcliffe, who has been in contact with Roman and Chelsea because of that previous bid made in the past. Ratcliffe, who is a Conservative Party donor. Ratcliffe, who is one of the richest men in this country. He's the perfect middleman. When you think about it, he is, you know? Um, at the very beginning, I found it tough, right? This is all in my opinion now. To really think that Roman could just wipe off 1.6 billion like that. You know, when I read that statement and it was like, he's letting it all go. I'm like, really? I, 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 I Almost to the point where I'm like, wow, what a guy. <laughs> what a lad. What a lad. To just let that all go. Yeah, don't need it. 1.6 billion is fine. Don't worry about it. It's hard to believe. But I think it's safe to say, myself and everyone here that's watching, we all believed it, yeah? Now, apparently, he wants that repaid. Now, is Roman Abramovich well within his rights to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely, he's well within his rights to do that. If he wants to, it's, it's his loan that he put into Chelsea Football Club. If he wants it back, he wants it back. Fair enough. But he knows with these sanctions, he can't. So there has to be a way. And this is where it gets sticky. This is where now we find Roman, Ratcliffe, the UK government, this, that and the other, loans, rain group. All we're bothered about now is Chelsea Football Club. And this is the one thing that's 
the common denominator between all of this madness that no one's talking about here. Chelsea Football Club have until May 31st <laughs> to get either an extension on the license, which is what I think might happen. I find it very, very hard to believe that just that Britain could just let Chelsea fold. It is it, it's it's I don't think that I don't think that will happen. But it's a possibility. And you know, there's risk. And sometimes that risk is a bit too big. And as I've said, Roman realistically doesn't really have anything to lose. You don't think he has uh, investments and assets and all that elsewhere. You don't think he's got nothing back at home. Of course he does. If this were to go the worst way possible for him, what, he doesn't get a penny? All right, cool. But neither do the UK government. And if we're talking on a political level with what's happening in the world right now, that would suit Russia very, very nicely. For them to just see Chelsea crumble and to see the UK government not get a penny... I mean, Chelsea crumbling doesn't concern them at all. But to see the UK government not get anything from it, cool. No problem. Fantastic. They've won. They've won. <laughs> you know? At the same time, if the UK government do get something, that doesn't sit right with them. So Roman is probably well within his rights to go, yeah, pay me back my loan. Pay me back my loan. I think this is a political move. Political move. To either not allow the British government to get a penny, or two to eventually get his loan back one way or another. We'll wait and see. Now, there's more detail um, concerning Chelsea Football Club. Let's get into this about what are the consequences. Matt Law. Some sources claim that Chelsea would be expelled from playing in the Premier League next season if a sale has not gone through by the end of this month and any minor delay would now put that in jeopardy. So, OK, this brings me back to the extension point. We can't even get an extension. As made clear um, by Martin Ziegler or Rob Draper that I read earlier on, the Premier League meet on the June 8th in order to, to constitute who's participating, how are we going to do this, and to start preparing for the new season. If Chelsea are not sold by then, we can't enter that conversation. We would go into administration. And this is where I, I have to stress, there is a big risk here now. As big and as huge and as loaded as we are, to the point where Chelsea are still not making money. I tried to look at getting a stadium tour done uh, a couple of days ago. I went on the Chelsea website to try and look at stadium tours and dates to see, you know, in order to maybe take some family up there and whatnot. Can't book. Chelsea's still sanctioned. You can't buy anything. You can't even buy a bottle from Chelsea Football Club. You can't do anything. Not a penny has gone into this club since we heard about all these sanctions happening up until now. Yet Chelsea are still operating. Chelsea are still allowing themselves to function with the money that they have. We are a big club. We are able to go on a little bit without anything coming in. But the truth is, with this, if this worst case scenario were to get to the deadline, May 31st, where the license that the government has issued for Chelsea to keep operating as a business stops it expires we can't no we can't function any longer we can no longer function as a business therefore the club needs to close that is where we're heading or oh, goes into administration at that point we would go into administration which would have consequences we've seen clubs go into administration we've seen what's happened i mean remember teams like wimbledon for example look at what happened to them you know you end up going down to flipping national league and all them lot and having to try and make your way back up that that's the worst case scenario i'd like to think that won't happen my own opinion i think jim ratcliffe's going to be the middleman in all of this that's my opinion my opinion i think jim in the end will be the one to solve this issue if it's actually legit that Roman wants his loan repaid. Because now, Todd Bowley, who is the preferred bidder by the Rain Group, he'd need to accept this. That consortium would need to accept this. And so would Jim, as far as I'm concerned. But he hasn't gone via the Rain Group. They would need to accept this. Rain would need to go, okay, yeah, we, we, we agree with this too. Jim's bypassed that process. He's not part of Rain. He's gone straight to Chelsea. So even if Todd... Bowley and his consortium go, okay, yeah, we'd, need, we, we'd be happy, I guess, to pay that loan as well. The Rain Group would have to be like, okay, we'd be happy to facilitate that as well. Because now apparently the, the, the structure of the cell has changed. It's 
crazy what's happening. But Simon Phillips has put one very interesting point here. Check this out. Roman Abramovich knows what is going on at Chelsea right now. Not many others do. That's key to remember. A lot of us are not on the inside. There are things happening and the proof is in the pudding. Apparently what we're hearing today was told to the bidders and to the government last week. We've only just heard about it today. Things are happening behind the scenes that we don't know. That's the truth. But in order for everyone to be a winner in this, you need the government to be able to get the money from the sale. You would need Chelsea to get this sorted by the end of the month. You would need the £1.6 billion repaid to Roman Abramovich. If you're able to facilitate those three options, everyone's a winner. My opinion, enter Jim Ratcliffe. That's how I think it's going to go. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, this is big. And the tr truth, truth be told, the only thing with Jim Ratcliffe is my concern... The one thing that helps him is that he's based here. Well, not based here, but he's British. Therefore, everything could go very smoothly. But he owns Nice. I don't know how long that would take in order to... Would he have to sell Nice, you know, in order to, to take Chelsea Football Club? Would he get an exception that will allow him to keep both? Would he get exceptions on time in order for him to acquire Chelsea with, with a condition that he must sell Nice in a, further, in a certain time period? Will he get that? Because Chelsea have to sort this out by May 31st. If we don't, we risk, with one week after that, the Premier League meeting and us not being a part of that conversation. Therefore, we would not be playing Premier League football next season. Then we're in trouble. So, it's going to be a very interesting few days. That Rob Draper report that I mentioned to you that I read the thread of, I just want to say a lot of ifs in there. There's a lot of speculation on his part. A lot of scenarios. Um, I did say I want to be level-headed and I want to be fair in this. Um, but the truth the truth be told, many big sources have come out today, including Matt Law and including everyone talking about this as of today. Chelsea are in a pickle now. This is serious. So this needs to get sorted. We have entered the end of the month. No matter what happens, Chelsea need to be safe. That's priority number one. So we'll wait and see what happens. Let me know down below your thoughts on this entire saga. And just as we thought, maybe it's all coming to an end. Even if Jim Ratcliffe has entered the bidding, we thought the bidding would come back down to two and we're going to pick one and that everything's going to be sorted, if it's Bowley or if it's Ratcliffe. And now it turns out we just don't know. We just don't know. It's one twist after another twist after another twist. Will Chelsea be saved? Um, wait and see. Let me know your thoughts down below. Much appreciated. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash the like button if you have enjoyed this. And I will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one. Have a good one, people. In a bit, take care. And peace.